You know, I first knew of Tom when I was working in uh, Los Angeles at Peterson's Hunting Magazine. I was a senior editor out there, and, and I kept seeing these photographs of these gigantic whitetails and, and monster mule deer. And uh, strangely, Tom's image was always in those photographs. So I was kind of trying to figure out exactly where he was hunting, you know. And then my boss, Craig Boddington, he would always pick sort of the best places to go hunting around the world as the editor-in-chief of the magazine. And funny how he always seemed to hunt with Tom, you know. And it's like, huh, Craig. What about a hunt with Tom? And it was like, oh, I don't think he's got any openings this year. One of those deals where uh, it only took about 20 years and I finally connected with Tom out here in Eastern Colorado. We're a couple of displaced cheese heads that uh, made it out to Colorado and we both have a few more gray hairs than we used to have, but just as much passion for the hunt as, as we've ever had. Now, how many acres are you hunting out here? We've got about uh, 100,000 acres up here and then we've got about another 40,000 acres, 50,000 acres down towards Lamar. So this is the Tom Teats National Forest we're in here right now. Yeah. This is the yeah. Memorial Forest. They call those states back east. Taxes are kind of <laughs> high though. <laughs> you know, I think Tom in another life would be a great poker player. He's one of those guys that's like, well, what do you want to hunt? Big mule deer or big whitetail? It's like, of course I want to hunt them both, Tom, but I've only got one tag. Well, in this area, you can take either one and you get out here and you're just amazed. You're just amazed at this country, which looks like a, a mouse would have to pack its lunch to go across it. And yet, there's big deer everywhere. Oh, right there, right there, right there, right there, right there. Good buck. Look at that. Good really buck. Good. Let's see if we can get out and set up on him. Yeah, nice one. Get a good, better look at him. Yeah. He's a good looking deer. I didn't think he was that big when we first saw him. Look at that. He's, I didn't either. I thought he was. He's pretty nice. He didn't look that wide at all, but he's. He's, he's 26. Yeah, he's a hell of a lot better than I thought he was. He's a good sure. buck. He's he's probably 180. He's got a fifth point on that one side. Yeah, he's he's a good buck. I, it's up to you. You know, like I told you, believe it or not, there's whitetails out here too. So and some, you know, it's early in the morning, yeah, I mean, but you know, you haven't seen them yet. But you know, it's early in the morning, yeah. Well, I mean, why don't we why don't we kind of work the whitetail country down the river bottoms? I mean, there's mule deer down there too, but. Yeah. You know, look, I'm not going to pass up a good anything. You know, if it's a great yeah. mule deer, I'll take a great mule deer. Well, let's, let's you know, I, I'd like you to see one of these big whitetails out here so you're a believer. So why don't we do that for a while and we can, always, we can find him tomorrow if we have to. All right. Chris Dorsey's let a trophy mule deer go because guide Tom Teets has told him about the big whitetail this improbable looking country holds. And for Dorsey, it's personal. I have been haunted by whitetails my entire life. I've hunted big game all over the world, been to Africa over 20 times, South America many times, and, and yet the one big animal that's really eluded me is, is a truly monster whitetail. Well, let's go find you a whitetail, bud. Uh, I tell you pretty what. good buck you just passed, so. You don't think we'll live to regret that, do you? Oh, of course you will. <laughs> Rest of your life. Whitetail hunts in Colorado used to be a real hard sell. Uh, you know, it's open country and you didn't hear a lot about it, but the word's kind of gotten out. Now I probably get, I would say half my hunters are really geared toward a big whitetail. And a lot of them, believe it or not, are from places like Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, uh, places where they've got big bucks, but you know, guys get addicted to big whitetails and that's, uh, they're a fun animal to hunt and we've got great quality. This eastern Colorado country isn't all sagebrush and yuccas. There are tree-lined creek bottoms that create natural highways for whitetails to follow. And these seem the natural places for Dorsey and Teets to hunt for that buck Dorsey set his heart on. Damn, there's a lot of cover down there. You wanna get up top? Got a glass further down? We can get a little better view. Deeper looks, eh? Right? There's the view. Check those willows and those cattails out good. Boy, you could almost just sit here, you know? Something's gonna happen sooner or later. Oh, absolutely. These bottlenecks like this? Yeah. You know, they gotta come across. They gotta hit this open. Right, right there. Right there, Chris. Can't tell. It's behind it. It's right behind that tree. Over here. Over here. Right here. Flag. You got yeah. one over here, too? Yeah. Okay. Well, we've seen a lot of little ones this morning. Tell you what, we just kind of keep poking and prodding on this rim right here. We come on the top of this rim and it's going to be a perfect shot. Oh yeah, and yeah, one of these times there's going to be a big one standing down there or laying down there. That'd be the perfect. That's what I love about hunting this kind of country, you know? It's a perfect ambush. Exactly. Now, let's move on to the next place. 
I actually started hunting the plains uh, back uh, pretty much when nobody hunted out here. I'm looking basically in any tall patches of native grass, uh, any little draws, any little cuts, patches of yucca, any cover whatsoever, and it can be as low as a foot and a half. And they're gonna just cuddle into that and think they're hidden. One art that the big whitetail of the East Colorado Plains have definitely mastered is that of hiding in plain sight, something Dorsey's learning for himself as he hunts with teats. The whitetail out here are giving new meaning to the term going to ground. It's like they've all dug holes and pulled the dirt back in on themselves. Having looked at every patch of cover likely to hold a whitetail, Dorsey and Teats are about ready to head in for lunch, but not before checking one last spot. Right there, right there, right there. There you go. Go buck right there. Look, look, oh my gosh. Look at the size of that guy. Man, look at the mass. It looks like he's got some trash or something going on too. We gotta get up on him. Oh, we'll, we'll try, we'll see. But man, get back in, Chris, get back in. Just sit here and watch them. Don't so move, they know we're here. We gotta get on them, bud. Hopefully they're gonna get up that hill and, and slow down. They're slowing down already, they're stopping. <laughs> Those are moving. Stud right there, man. You know, he's not looking back at us though. He's not spooked, he's just following the doe. No, yeah, he doesn't care about us. He's caring about them does, but they're jacked up. Yeah, that's a lot of sets of eyes. Boy, if we can get them to peel off, wouldn't that be nice? Okay, they're milling, they're milling around again right by that fence. I think he's gonna bed down up there, huh? Looks like it. The does are... There he goes, he's down. Know, the, the does are peeling off, but he's not moving. He's down. We gotta make it across this little bit here, down yeah. into that bottom. I just wanna side hill it up there and then yeah. cut down. We got the wind then. Once we get maybe 100 yards here, he can't see us anymore. If we can just pull that off, we've got it. We gotta, we gotta do it at some point. Let's do it right that now. That is a hell of a buck, man. Let's go. Okay. I think we can get it. There, right there. The lone prairies of eastern Colorado may not look like whitetail country, but they're where host Chris Dorsey and guide Tom Teets have seen a whitetail Dorsey's waited a lifetime for. I think he's gonna be right over this hill. I hope. I hope I'm right. Just gotta be ready. Yeah. I mean, it can happen so fast out here, Chris. Yeah, let's not drive any further, huh? No, no, I'm not going any further. The wind's in our face. We're just gonna get out nice and easy, load up, go up over this hill. If just, we'll just walk this road, it'll be quiet. I'm gonna chamber when one right we get away. over that hill, be ready. And hope we're right. Let's do it. You can count on me being ready, partner. Okay, buddy. Let's go. Got a shell in? Ready to go? Ready? Okay. Nice and easy up there here. He could be anywhere on this stuff. He's got to be there, you think? I don't know why he left the does. That's what I can't figure out. I'm hoping he's just tired and he just laid down. He's bedded down. Minute. Yeah. He's bedded down up here. This could be a snapshot. When we get up here, just look at every patch of yuccas. And man, it's going to be like hunting quail. Be careful. Hang on a second. Let me look this over here. No, oh, okay, keep going. Let's keep going. It's gotta be here pretty close, Chris. You know, unless he cut down the other side. Chris, right, Chris, right there. Right there, man. Right there, you see him? Get over to the fence. Get to the fence. Get to the fence and get ready. Get ready.
buddy, what the fuck? What a fuck? What a fuck? You're a hell of a bird dog, man. I had a feeling that's what he did. That's exactly what he did. Yeah, we're, we're sneaking up and, and the buck has not come out. And then, uh, <laughs> and then Tom says, he's right here. And of course, I'm looking 150, 300 yards out, thinking he's somewhere down the distance. And then he goes, no, he's right here. Like, 12, 13 steps away, right in front of us. I mean, all we can see is this massive white antlered rack sitting there. <laughs> it's like, my God, there he is. Man, he just shoots out of there like, like thrown out of a trap. And uh, I mean, it was amazing, amazing little encounter. I mean, one of the most dramatic, impressive, regardless of the size of the deer, to get that close in that buck and for Tom just to spot him right there. That <laughs> was so cool. <laughs> Look at this thing! Oh man! Look at that buck! Oh, Tell me you got a better whitetail than that on the wall, huh? Uh, no matter, no matter what direction you look at this guy from, he is spectacular. God bless you. You're honored to do it. You buddy. just got a spot in heaven, buddy. <laughs> just eye popping. I mean, an incredible buck. I mean, truly one of the biggest bucks I've ever seen. Much less to to actually take an animal like that. I mean, just a phenomenal deer. Look at this! And all I'm thinking as I'm basically. walking up is. Don't miss, don't miss, don't miss, don't miss. You know, he's gonna jump, he's gonna bolt, he's not gonna stand up and just give you a shot, so. Whoa, buddy, look at that. I mean, this is so far beyond <laughs> any expectation. Incredible well, why don't you get time. your tag out, let's take care of let's that operation do that, here. Man. Quick, look and at then this. we'll uh, look at this. do some more stuff here, get the truck, get a bunch of pictures, and sweet, baby. All right. God bless you, man. That was an, an unbelievable stock. Unbelievable buck with an unbelievable stock. You look at the photographs, you see these monster deer seemingly everywhere, except where you are. So to finally get into a situation where we find a buck like that and to have such an incredible encounter, I don't have in my trophy collection any animal any more memorable. It's a 200 class whitetail, heavy, heavy, look like one of those big Canadian monarchs. And yet here he is in my backyard, which made it all the sweeter. A picture may be worth a thousand words, but the look on Dorsey's face tells it all. After years of holding only pictures of world-class whitetail, Dorsey at last gets to hold the real thing in his own hands, and that's something, along with the memory of a stalk and a shot that will last a very long time. You know, after this hunt, uh, after looking at some of the photographs of the big deer that, that Tom and his clients have taken here, I know now why Boddington never let me come. <laughs>